Hi, Debbie Morton here, and I just want to take a hot minute to let you know that the video you were about to watch wasn't filmed specifically here for YouTube. It was actually over on my Facebook page, and I brought that content over here to YouTube. So disregard any references to anything Facebook. I'm happy to have you along. If you like my content, you can like, you can leave a comment in the comment section, subscribe, and hit that bell if you'd like to be notified anytime I go live in the future. Have an absolutely wonderful day, and thanks for watching. Hey, Debbie Morton here, and guess what? The walk-in talks are back. I think I'm gonna do them on Wednesday. Wednesday mornings, I think, will be a day I'm gonna actually like commit to it. And, uh, you know, accountability is huge, and sometimes when you tell someone what you're doing, then you're, you're able to be held accountable. <laughs> so, Wednesdays are gonna be my day, and you're not gonna believe what is happening. So, I, I came out here. I'm actually not walking today, and I'll tell you why in just a second. I'm gonna do like a little show and tell. It's gonna be some really cool stuff I'm gonna show you, but I came out to do this live, and they're cutting down trees like just right behind the house that's across from me so if you start to hear like some background noise or whatever it's because they've got like this wood chipper and, and they're they've got chainsaws or whatever the heck is going on there but it's very loud and i'm like watching trees fall down as as i'm doing this but anyways i wanted to hop on here and i don't want to to, to keep you very long i want to just kind of start laying the groundwork for this journey that I'm gonna be on in the next year. If you saw my video that I did in Mexico, where I kind of just talked about, you know, the changes that are happening in my life, I, I wanted to like just start bringing you in as a part of what I'll be going through over the next, I'm gonna say eight months or something like that. My plan is, let me back up. I know I'm all over the place today. It's been a while, right? So my husband passed in June and I have just an incredible deal on a house that I'm living in. It's a, a four bedroom, three bath, three car garage, just a beautiful home. And we're awesome tenants. We didn't buy anything because the housing markets went crazy right after we moved here to Phoenix. And so we we're going to wait until the housing market dropped a little bit. And since I've never raised our rent, it's been like just a killer deal. And I'm so grateful, just like so very, very grateful. So I have until next May or June and I could stay as long as I want. But my goal is to stay here until next May or June. And then I'm literally going to be on the road. I'm going to um, sell everything, everything that I have, put the few sentimental items that I have in storage, and then I'm gonna hit the road. And the reason I wanna do this, I don't have anything that's holding me down. I don't have close family. I don't have kids, nieces, nephews. Uh, brothers, sisters, my parents gone. I, I really don't have any family that I'm near my family is because I've been in the network marketing industry for several years. My family is a team. It's the people that you know I'm with every day on Zoom calls and I travel with. And so uh, for that reason, I'm gonna sell everything. I'm gonna get my car and just head out. And I'm really, really blessed because I have kind of a gift that I know most people don't have. I have about probably a year and a half of timeshare points saved up. So literally I could go spend a month in Florida, I could go spend a month in St. Martin, I could spend a month in Sedona, and I can live out of very nice timeshare resorts equipped with a kitchen. I'll have a washer and dryer most of the time in my unit. And so it's actually gonna be like stringy one vacation after the other. And I won't do this forever. I just feel like it would be a great way to see the country, to see the world. And so I'm at a time in my life where I have my health and I have this ability, I have this gift, and so I'm gonna do it. So today, I'm gonna take you just on a quick little tour of some of the stuff that I need to do to get ready for this. And I'm out here in front of my two garages and I'm gonna be showing you what's inside my garage. So it's a little messy right now because I've um, been starting to just pull stuff down out of, uh, let me come on in here been pulling stuff down out of the shelves and the rafters and stuff like that. Um, but it gets to be, a little, I'm not going to lie, it's like really, really overwhelming that when the weather cools off, it's still hot here in Phoenix, but when the weather cools off, there's just so much to sort through. You know, there's all these uh, different shelves of stuff. And actually, John is the one who put a lot of the stuff up here. And I don't even know, like, where to take all the, the chemical stuff, all of the liquids that are here in the garage. I have to figure out where to like drop all of that stuff off. I've got electronic waste I've got to get rid of. And then it's weird when you're selling everything 
like like the little stuff uh, do you just throw it away a box of paper clips a box of of you know just little stuff like what do i do with this is there any value to it it's like and i hate to throw away stuff that can be used but but I'm going to be going through absolutely everything. So that's one of the garages that I'll be going through. Oh, I'm going to come back to that because I'm going to show you inside my car. You're going to, want to see that too. And then this is another, the, another garage. And here's the biggest challenge I have. Do you see up on that shelf up there? My mother collected salt and pepper shakers. And I probably have about a thousand pair of salt and pepper shakers. <laughs> and I'm going crazy going, how do I get rid of these things? There's some different salt and pepper shaker groups. I've called a couple different consignment places, and I'm sure that, that inside of there, a few of them have value, but it's kind of like sifting through the, to find the needle in the haystack. And so uh, that's going to be a project in and of itself. And here's, here's kind of an interesting story. This is, is I try to weave lessons through these walk and talks. So here's, here's a quick lesson for you. John used to keep the garbage cans on the side of the house. And with the garbage cans on the side of the house, each time I would take out the garbage, I would have to unlock a gate and then drag the garbage through a bunch of gravel up this little hill and then, and then down the driveway. And I was complaining I had a friend staying the night one night and, and I said, this is a pain in the butt, it's garbage day and I have to take the garbage cans out. And she said, well, why don't you put them in the garage? And I said, because they stink. I don't want garbage cans stinking up my garage. She goes, you have two garages. You have a garage that you never use, so why don't you put them in there? So I now have garbage cans in a garage that I never use. So a lot of times as you go through life, we just get stuck. Like we're just so used to doing something a certain way that we don't even like think that there might be a better way. Like we don't even, we don't even consider it. And even when somebody brought it up to me, it's like, yeah, but, <laughs> you know, it's the infamous, yeah, but I've always been doing it this way. So I'm going to continue doing it this way. But now I've switched it. I got to tell you, it's like so much easier on garbage day to take the garbage cans out without having to drag them through a bunch of loose gravel. So one final thing that I'm going to share with you when I do this journey. Uh, first of all, I will be, I'm doing lives here. And there's a lot of different things that I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about some of the grief process. I'm going to talk about some of the things that maybe you need to consider if you're in a relationship and, and something were to happen to one of you, there's a lot of different lessons that I wanna share here, but also to just take you on my journey because I probably will be going over to a YouTube channel and a lot of this video will actually get spliced into the YouTube channel. So when I hit the road, I'll be taking people with me on that journey once I'm on the road. So I don't intend to sleep in my car. If you go to YouTube, there's a whole bunch of people right now because of the economy, because they're, they're not tied down to jobs anymore, you know, in a physical job, like going into an office. There are many people who are living out of their vans. They're living out of their, a lot of people living out of their cars. And actually about eight months ago, I started watching a woman named Nikki Delventhal. She lives out of a 2006 Toyota Prius, or she did, she just upgraded. But, I'm like, there's no way I would ever want to live out of a, a 2006 Toyota Prius. And yet, you know, she did some really cool adventures. I'm like, but that's pretty cool, like some of the places that she's visiting. So while I will be traveling in my car, I don't plan on sleeping in my car. However, there might be an instance where maybe I'm traveling from the East Coast to the West Coast or vice versa. And maybe some weather hits, maybe I'm tired. For whatever reason, I might pull into a truck stop or a rest stop, or there's actually other videos that show you like all the free places that you can sleep. You know, and here's something that I would never would have thought of in front of a car dealership for the brand of car you have. Like if you sleep in, like if you just need a place to sleep for a little while, um, you know, your car will blend in. And if somebody knocks on your door and says, what are you doing here? It's like, oh, my car's broken. I want to take it in for service in the morning. <laughs> there's like lots of different places that you can sleep. It is not at all what I'm planning. That being said, I want to be prepared in the event I can't get a hotel I'm too far from a hotel it's weather they're booked whatever so what I'm gonna do for my car and I'll leave you with this this is gonna be kind of fun so what I'm gonna do is I have a Hyundai and it's brand new I've had it well I shouldn't say brand new it's two years old and I have 9,000 miles on it it's two years old with 9,000 miles because I work from home, I never drive anywhere. And when John was here, we would alternate. We would take my car sometimes, we would take his car sometimes. So hold on one second, I'm gonna, I know this doesn't make good video, but I'm gonna do Okay, so um, hold on, I'm gonna get inside. 
Okay. So inside my car, the back seats fold down. I don't know if you can see this, but the back seats fold down. Let me, you know what? Let me see if I can switch my video. That might help. Ah, I can. Okay. So inside my car, the seats, the back seats fold down, but there's like a ridge right over there. And so that ridge is like maybe four inches. So if I had to sleep in my car, I'm going to have, um, I have a backpack. Ooh, what have I done here? <laughs> okay. I have, uh, I have a backpack, like a self-inflatable mattress. It rolls up to a really small thing, but it, it actually self-inflates. So I could throw a mattress back there. But it wouldn't be very comfortable because I'm going to be like sleeping over this little ridge. And so I noticed that in this other garage, I have a whole bunch of lumber. And so I'm going to make like a little four inch platform in the back. And the cool thing is it'll double. It'll have room for me to store stuff and it'll be kind of hard for people to get to. But if there's anything valuable or whatever, I know I'm giving away my secrets. If there's anything valuable or anything, I can shove that under that little platform, but it'll create like a level platform. So if I had to, I'll be able to sleep in my car. And I'm gonna take the time to do that. Sometimes it's best if you prepare for things in advance so that in the event you ever need it, it's there and it's done. So, um, so that's one of the things I'm gonna be doing for my car. But my plan is actually just to, so I have invitations to sleep on, uh, in spare bedrooms, I shouldn't say on the couch, <laughs> not couch surfing. I, I have invitations to stay in spare rooms of a lot of different friends and people who are on my team. I've got invitations to go to Australia, to go to Europe, to Spain. I have a lot of invitations to travel around the world and have a place to stay, but mostly I'll be driving like between resorts. So I may drive from maybe Palm Springs, all the way over to Gatlinburg, Tennessee. I might go up to Williamsburg. I might go down to Orlando, back to Sedona. So I'll be driving like back and forth between. And then each time I stay somewhere, I'll stay probably for at least two weeks to a month. And then I have a favorite resort in Mexico where I was a couple weeks ago. I'll fly down to Mexico. I may fly to St. Martin. I'm going to Malta in November. So, so really what I'm going to be doing is just using my car to get between places and then I'll stay wherever I, I, wherever I land in the timeshare. And I'll do this for, I'm guessing, at least a year. I don't know if I get sick of it. If I don't want to do it, I still have the points. I'll just buy a house. I'm thinking of moving to the East Coast. So I'll buy a house on the East Coast and live there. And uh, Charlotte. In, in particular, Charlotte is where, where I'm kind of looking right now. But who knows? Maybe I'll see a place along my journeys that I like better. Uh, so I'll do this maybe maybe a few months, maybe a year and a half. Who knows? But I just want to leave you with this thought. Think outside the box. Like the, the garbage cans that were over there that are now in the garage. It's like sometimes we get so stuck in our thinking. You know, we have to work at a job for 40 years and retire on 40% of what we make, or we have to buy a house with a white picket fence and live in this house with a white picket fence and we want a vacation, but we have to try to figure out how do we get that time off for a vacation. I've always wanted to travel the world. And now there's this opportunity that while it kind of sucks the circumstances around it, but it is something I proposed to John. He didn't have an interest in, and I said, hey, let's buy an RV and live out of an RV for a year. He's like, yeah, no, I don't think so. <laughs> so at this point, you know, it's like, why not? I, I have my health, I have the desire, I have the, I love adventure. You guys know I love adventure. And so, so with that, I'm gonna take it. So what are the things that you really want to do in your life? What are some of the things that you've dreamed about? What are some of the things that you've often thought, oh, I'd love to do that? And then the little, yeah, but, yeah, but, and all the yeah, buts start coming up. Stop listening to the yeah, buts. You know, just think, how can I make this happen? Instead of saying why you can't, instead of listening to the voice saying, yeah, but you're not going to be able to do that because you have a house. You got a sweet deal on a house. Yeah, but you're not going to be able to do that because gas prices are rising. Yeah, but you're not going to be able to do that because of, like, there's so many yeah, buts I could have listened to. 
And I didn't. I'm like, I just keep saying, how can I do this? And there's a lot to do. I just showed you like, this is just the garage I got to get rid of. I've got everything inside the house. I've got, I've got furniture and all the stuff in the desk drawers that I have to sort through. There's just, and, and it would be easy for me. It, it's, and I have said it to myself, yeah, but do I really want to do this? Why not just load it all in a van or a, a moving truck and take it to wherever I, I buy a house or wherever I ultimately end up and just stay here? But I would look back in the end and say, I had an opportunity and I didn't take it. How many people go to their graves never taking an opportunity that they wish they could have. Maybe they have a beautiful, beautiful voice and they never did anything with it. Maybe they have the ability to write amazing music and they never did anything. Maybe they have an incredible book that's like swirling around in their head and they never wrote it. How many things are sitting in the graveyard because somebody was too afraid to take the chance. They were too afraid. They let the yeah buts get in their way. So I'm going to leave you with that. I will be back every Wednesday, and I'm always going to have a, a lesson for you. I'll, usually I'll be walking, but there are going to be times when I'm going to be at my house taking you on this journey of getting rid of everything in preparation for my life on the road. So uh, if you're watching this on a replay, hit that replay button. Again, Facebook doesn't like long videos, and I'm trying to keep these short. I really am trying to keep these short. So, so hit re replay. If you got some value from this, you know, just give me a reaction to it. And I love you all, and I look forward forward to taking you on this journey with me. Talk to you soon. Bye.